on the fourth day of October, Halloween gave to me four alien spelunking, three UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me once again for the 31 days of Halloween here on Legion Podcasts. I, of course, am Bo, your host, your companion, your your uh, faithful ombudsman. I'm probably not using that word correctly, but, but your, your, uh, your guide through uh, 31 days of horror movies that I've selected for myself for no other reason than I wanted to watch them, I had never watched them. Uh, or they're just the absolute best, and I think that you should watch them. This movie falls into that category of, I had seen this movie at one point and felt like I needed to revisit it, given a lot of the evolution of my podcasting career, where a lot of my focus has been on found footage movies here of late. And so, for this fourth day, we are talking about Area 51... A found footage horror film directed by Oren Pelly, who, uh, of course, directed the uh, original Paranormal Activity, and it feels like the 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 lineage of this movie is such that it should be great. It's such a gimme of an idea of a real layup of of a film, which is you have a, a bunch of kids deciding that they're going to bust into Area Fifty One to see what's what. And you do it all found footage style because they're carrying cameras in with them and that sort of thing. And then mayhem ensues. And that is kind of what happens in this movie, but I don't think it works out very well. And for those of you who listen to The Dark Parade, particularly the episodes called Found Footage Fool, it is time that we revert back to that standard on this very special episode of the 31 Days of Halloween here on Legion Podcast to determine... Is this a successful found footage movie or, in fact, a successful found footage movie at all? And so uh, let us begin with our set of five criteria, five, five characteristics of found footage movies, five components that are essential to making a good found footage horror film. And so let us begin with the, that application. Uh, so criteria number one, is there a good reason to keep the camera on? And in this case, of course, as I said, this is a, a, a movie about uh, three kids, uh, four if you count the guy, their, their getaway driver, who, for reasons of their own, want to break into Area 51 to determine if there is, in fact, some sort of alien ship or alien life hiding inside, being kept by the government. We learn that the main character has had uh, some interaction uh, has potentially been taken as we see at the beginning of the movie. And that has led to his obsession with area 51 and learning the answers to some of these questions. And then there are other uh, characters involved that have motives of their own. And so the, the movie is ultimately about them documenting their preparation and then the journey inside area 51. So keeping the camera on totally fine, totally reasonable. Um, you know, as with anything, you kind of get to the end of the movie and because of the mayhem going on, you're like, I don't know if anyone's holding on to a camera. There's a little bit of a cheat, uh, with, with some of the characters, but particularly at the end of the movie, there's, uh, the driver has a camera on him and you're like, man, this guy wasn't bought in to begin with. He is certainly not going to be bought into the whole, I'm going to, you know, record everything that I do. Um, but for the most part, it's fine. You know, I'll allow the, the brief dalliances with, uh, you know, uh, incredulity. But then you get to the characters. And that's where this movie has a real problem. Which is that these characters aren't particularly likable. Especially the main character who is kind of obsessive and so forth. You don't really get a lot of, a lot of character to these characters. Like, you understand their motivations for the most part. But you don't really know anything about them. There's no reason to care about these people. And having a motivation of, hey, I think maybe once I got sucked up by a, a UFO and now I want to get back and see if that was the case or, or get to the bottom of it. 
that's understandable and it's a good motive for the character, but it doesn't replace character. Um, you know, character motivation is great, but you have to have the character part of the motivation uh, to, to work well. And so all the characters in this movie, I think, are pretty flat. The only one that I really like is the guy who decides that he's going to bail on the whole Enterprise at a certain point and becomes the getaway driver. Who, once they get to the point of like, okay, we're ready to go. We've got these like heat resistant suits on and we've got, we stole this, uh, key card and we're going to be able to bust into the base. And he's like, what are you people doing? I thought this was a goof. I thought we were going to come out to the desert and drink a few beers and smoke some pot and, and laugh about this. I didn't think we were really going to do it because that's crazy talk. We're busting into a government facility that is highly guarded and, you know, best case scenario has a bunch of creepy aliens in it. So how about we just say no? And so I, I like the fact that at least he shows some kind of critical thinking and, and self-preservation. But anyway, he's not in it as much as I would like. But yeah, I think the characters are kind of flat and uninteresting. Um, and then we come to our third criteria for our found footage fool episodes, which is authenticity. Does this all feel authentic within the world of the film. Obviously we're talking about UFOs and that's not authentic, right? Like, you know, if such a thing does exist, there is certainly no proof of any of that, uh, other than, you know, some grainy videos that you see in some, uh, congressional hearings from time to time, which are wildly fascinating. Don't get me wrong. That stuff makes me very happy. I'm glad that there's some mystery left in this old world. So, uh, <laughs> the authenticity within the film though, I think is mostly there. I think that's fine. Um, I think that, uh, again, within the, the reality created by Oren Pelly in this movie, that all of the technology makes sense. Uh, how they get inside makes sense. Although once they start running around, it's like, if there are all of these security measures to keep people from ever getting to the base, why would this not be like highly scrutinized once they're in? Because once they're, the kids get inside, they're kind of just wandering around and you would think that at a certain point, well, before it happens, I mean, at a certain point that the people on the base are like, Hey, we got problems. Somebody has broken in, but you would think they would be caught way sooner than that by security f footage or, uh, you know, guards running patrols, especially if the, the deep guarded secrets of this base are what they are within this film. And so that, starts to strain belief quite a bit. So but the front end, yes. The second end, eh, maybe not so much. Maybe it's not, maybe it does not hold together as well as one would hope. And then we come to watchability, our fourth in our, our five criteria. Watchability is where this movie really stumbles because the thing that you are watching a movie called Area 51 for is crazy shit happening in Area 51. The problem with this movie is not that much crazy shit happens until the way back end of this movie. And I need more than that. There is way too much setup, way too much screwing around to get to the actual reason I'm here to watch this movie. And there is nothing more disappointing than realizing more than halfway through a movie like, oh, this is not the movie that I wanted it to be. And you can make the argument like, hey, your expectations of the movie and what the movie is are two entirely different things. Oren Pelly made the movie he wanted to make. And if you don't respond to it, respond to it on that level, but not the anticipation of it. But I would counter, uh, invisible listener, that Oren Pelly did a great job with Paranormal Activity, or maybe it was just the editors of that film did a great job with keeping enough creepy stuff happening along the way that you were bought in by the time that all hell breaks loose in that movie, you're into it. Like you, you've already been creeped out a number of times by a, a number of really well-constructed scenes. And this movie is one of those found footage films that's really backloaded where there's a whole lot of setup and then mayhem. And you can make that argument, uh, that Blair Witch is like that. But again, I would counter invisible listener with, the idea that Blair Witch also has a lot of creepy stuff along the way to kind of keep you invested. And it also gets deep into the characters in a way that this movie never does. So there's something to hang your hat on with those. 
And in this, you're just spending a bunch of time around characters that you really don't care about all that much and who, uh, you know, are, are just dicking around, playing around with their suits and talking about how they're going to break into this place. And, you know, there's a little bit of a, a centerpiece scene of them busting into some guy's house to steal his key card. And again, I don't care about any of that stuff. You know, I'm not worried that they're going to get caught because it's only 30 minutes into the movie. So there's no tension in that scene. And I just, I just didn't care. And then, and then people, <laughs> I'll tell you another thing. By the time you get to the end of this movie it and things do pop off, there are some really cool moments at the very, very end of this film. But when you first see the aliens, you're like, eh, okay. I mean, they're, they're just kind of alien monsters. And the one thing I like about something like Dark Skies that we talked about yesterday is that even though those aliens' motives are inexplicable, as they kind of are here, they do feel like the kinds of creatures in, in the previous film that can travel, you know, millions of light years and do what they will with human beings. These just feel like straight up monsters. And... There, that again begs the question of like, well, so how do they communicate and what are they, not even what are their plans here? What kind of, you know, scheme is being hatched by these aliens and do they seem intelligent enough to actually hatch said schemes? And that's where I get real dicey with this movie where I just don't understand how the monsters being presented to us in this movie are capable of, of, that kind of, you know, fourth dimensional thinking and travel and things like that. So I, it, it just doesn't hang together real well. And large swaths of the movie are just good old fashioned boring, you know, <laughs> where you're waiting for something to kick off. And when it finally does, there's a great moment where you see one of the characters just kind of disappear. And it's really interesting. I'm like, oh, wow, I wish more of the movie had been this. Um, or at least this had been teased earlier on in the movie. Like if this had happened at the 40 minute mark, as opposed to the 80 minute mark, I really would have been more excited to keep watching this movie as it was. It was a real slog. And then we come to our final criteria for found footage fool, which is scares is the movie scary. And as I said, there are some moments at the end of this movie that are legitimately creepy. Like it is not without... Um, moments of tension and, and dread and horror uh, because Oren Pelly is good at doing that kind of thing. It's just getting there and the fact that there's so little of it that makes this movie a real disappointment. And as I said, a lot of these movies are movies that I'm going back to to watch again because I had seen Area 51. I remembered it being kind of disappointing, but it fit into our theme of Blumhouse movies, not only Blumhouse movies, but also kind of checking in on the alien side of the Blumhouse catalog, which we did with Dark Skies, which is a far superior film. And and it kind of leaves me at a place where I'm not really recommending you see Area 51. I, I'm more enjoying this like palate cleanser of a film before we dive into some stuff on the back end of this and our downhill race through the Blumhouse catalog or, or some of the highlights where we're going to talk about some straight up bangers from Blumhouse. And so Area 51 is an, uh, an interesting oddity in that it is a found footage movie by the guy who did Paranormal Activity. And there's some money behind it clearly. And there are so many things that the movie has going for it and it can never capitalize on any of that. It's a real disappointing film. And, you know, hey, like not every one of these is going to be great. Although this is probably, as I'm looking at the list, this is probably the low point of our 31 days. Because everything else I'm looking at is like, yeah, this is good. This is good. Yep, 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 yep. So this is probably the one and only movie that on this list that I would straight up tell you not to see. Maybe watch Dark Skies again or if you're in a pinch, if you want to watch the fourth kind. You know, that's not the worst choice to make if you're interested in an alien horror movie. Actually, the, the watch Fire in the Sky. Fire in the Sky is ten times scarier and more coherent and more interesting than Area 51. And if you want to have a great double feature, you do Dark Skies and Fire in the Sky. You probably do Fire in the Sky first, then Dark Skies. I think that's the way to play it. Maybe not. I don't know. James Garner's real good in Fire in the Sky. 
<laughs> we, we can talk about this later. But yeah, it's a it's kind of a bummer. Uh, so we're going to leave it there. Sorry to bring you the one and only movie on this list that I would not actually recommend. But it is disappointing. It, it, it's a disappointment of a movie. But it's an interesting disappointment. Uh, because it does have such a, a weird pedigree and, and a suggestion of quality. And it just never does anything all that interesting with it. So if you want to continue this conversation, if you want to talk more about Area 51 with me, um, be sure you head over to legionpodcasts.com uh, where you can find this post and attach to this post. There will be a link to the Discord server uh, along with all the you know Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. But if you want to talk to me specifically, uh, hit that Discord server link because that's what I pay attention to. Uh, uh, I, I am one of the olds and therefore do not really enjoy... Uh, you know, Facebook and, and Twitter all that much. Um, uh, but I love Discord because it's an actual conversation where, uh, especially as we're getting into the spooky season, it is so much fun uh, to talk about these Halloween movies and, and debate them and, and go back and forth with better recommendations and things like that. It's that That's the whole point of this, right? Is to kind of spark that conversation and, and emphasize that love of the genre uh, or mode, if you will, as we are getting closer and closer to Halloween. But it is only day four of our 31 days of Halloween. We got 27 movies left to go. That's a lot of movies. And like I said, this is the only one of the bunch that I would not recommend to you. And we're as we get closer to Halloween, the movies are only going to get better and more interesting, I assure you. So, uh, the, yeah, there's some great stuff planned. And I'm excited to talk about those. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to continue our, our Blumhouse... Uh, journey, but we're doing so. We're leaving space behind, and we're getting uh, straight up devilish. And I think you're going to enjoy that conversation uh, as well. That's going to be a real good time. So I'm excited about recording that one. Uh, it, it's going to be fun to talk about because uh, it was a movie I have not seen in a while, and I was able to revisit it, and I really enjoyed the my time with it. So uh, we'll talk about that then. Hey, be sure, if you're listening to this on the Dark Parade feed, that you are subscribing to the Legion Podcasts uh, feed. You can get that on the podcatcher of your choice, where you can get all of the shows hosted by legionpodcasts.com. If you're listening on legionpodcasts.com and you are enjoying this, head over to the Dark Parade, uh, also something you can find on the podcatcher of your choice. And uh, yeah, we do weekly episodes over there. Um, this October, we will not be doing an episode every Wednesday, only because you are getting 31 mini episodes. So uh, there will be some other stuff mixed in, some uh, hopefully uh, some special stuff along the way to keep things interesting and lively. Um, but we are not doing you know the regular schedule during the month of october so uh because you're getting so much you're getting all kinds of stuff this month uh thanks to uh me over promising uh, uh basically overextending myself to do this kind of nonsense but uh but it's fun i have so much fun doing this anyway enough of that uh go out have yourselves a spooky october 4th uh we are just a few weeks away from halloween i could not be more excited uh, I, I hope that you're enjoying this journey. I hope that you reach out to me and let me know what you think about these movies. And in the meantime, I will see you tomorrow for the fifth entry in the 31 days of Halloween. See you then. Oh.